everybody and welcome to week six of our Trustworthy Study. We made it everyone, congratulations. We are so excited to wrap this thing up and a little sad of course, because there's always things that we can learn. So I have a question for y'all and it is, what king do you resonate with most? But before we do that, I'm gonna try to list all the kings, okay, and see if I can say them. Right. So, we have Saul. And you can always phone a friend. Oh, perfect, got you. <laughs> ding, ding. Okay, Saul, David, Solomon, mm -hmm. Rehoboam, wow. Jeroboam. Jeroboam, there she goes, Ahab, uh -huh. Jehoash, Jehoash, great yes. job, you got it. Hezekiah, yes, and Josiah. Very good. Yeah. Oh my goodness, and of course, guys. we know that that's not all the kings. You're right. 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 So these are the kings that we've been featuring. But inside the study, there's a timeline that mm -hmm. connects all of the kings uh -huh. so that you can really dig a little deeper, even into some of the kings that we didn't study, which your question. Yes. Which one do you resonate with most? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to pick one that we haven't focused on. Perfect. I love that. Um, and obviously, our favorite king is... King, King Jesus. Jesus. Right. But since um, we're going to talk about the earthly kings before we get to King Jesus, because this is a really profound week yeah. where we're going to see that all of this angst mm -hmm. that forms in the people um, really is such a pointing to what Jesus will one day be, the deliverer, the rescuer, the one true King. trustworthy king, yeah. right? And um, this week's video is actually in front of the ruins of the temple. And remember in week one where God said, um, you don't want an earthly king. Mm. You, if, you, if you do get an earthly king, like the nations around you, this is what's going to happen. Well, this week you'll see that we record this video in front of the ruins of the temple. And um, this was the culmination, the result of the earthly kings, mm. a divided kingdom a destroyed temple wow. and a people that have been exiled. Mm -hmm. And it's just a pretty telling uh, picture, if mm -hmm. you will, of God allowed the people to make the choice and then the consequences that came with that choice were pretty severe. Wow. So the king that I would say um, that I, I really have learned a lot from, and it is he is featured in our workbook in a digging deeper section, but it's mm -hmm. King Jehoshaphat. Mm. And I think the thing that is really profound about the story of King Jehoshaphat and, and the reason that I will think about him a lot is because he was under pretty severe threat. Three countries banded together and were marching mm -hmm. against him. And uh, we find we find his story in the Kings too, but remember we also talked about how when you're studying the Kings, you really have to go to first and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles. Chronicles. Mm -hmm. So we find his story in the section of Chronicles okay. where um, the scripture says, alarmed King Jehoshaphat resolved mm -hmm. to inquire of the Lord. And I love this lesson because I know what it feels like to be alarmed, yeah. but I think maybe my uh, everyday reality might be alarmed. Lisa called her friend, yes. right? Oh, yes. Or alarmed. Lisa had a panic attack. <laughs> yeah. Or alarmed. Lisa got very emotional mm -hmm. when I want my life to be much more like the pattern. And it had to be a pattern because if he's alarmed mm -hmm. and his first reaction is to inquire of the Lord, that tells me he had established a pattern of turning to the Lord first in his life so that the minute he felt alarmed, it was in his natural pattern to immediately inquire of the Lord. And I want that for my mm -hmm. life. And so I really love that lesson, alarm, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. Okay. And uh, the people gathered around and King Jehoshaphat acknowledges, I don't know what to do. Yeah. He says oh, wow. to the Lord in this epic moment, I mm. think, um, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you, mm. Lord. And then we find him bowing down on his face, listening to wise counsel. There's a man in the assembly that stands up and says, the battle does not belong to you. Mm -hmm. It belongs to the Lord. 
And somehow in this process of praying and fasting and gathering and listening to wisdom and declaring, I don't know what to do, but keeping his focus wow. on the Lord, he decides the best way to fight the three countries that have banded together and are marching against him is to put the worshipers at the head of his army. Yeah. And as their worship goes out, mm -hmm. Um, the Lord set an ambush in the hearts of the three countries that banded against them. They start fighting amongst themselves. And then there's this beautiful moment where King Jehoshaphat, he crests the hill and looks out at this vast army yeah. that he was so afraid of. And there was not one man left standing. Mm. And he had not fought the battle with the strongest wow. men up front carrying weapons and mass destruction and mm -hmm. killing and murder or even manipulation and control and a better battle strategy yeah. he fought that battle with worship wow. and um i just think it's so profound and then at the end of jehoshaphat's story he uh the bible tells us that um not only did he win the battle and not only did his people get the plunder from the enemy armies but it says then king jehoshaphat's country was at peace and there was rest on every side mm. and so i look at this pattern of king jehoshaphat's life and i think that's what mm. i want in my life yeah, yeah. and uh, i think it's just really profound and we see the results from that pattern of just the Lord went before him. Mm -hmm. so he doesn't have to right. worry about it. Also, in the story, it, it seems like he just took a posture of humility. Mm. And so I think that's a good leadership lesson, just as I'm in the position that I'm in at Proverbs. It's just a great reminder for that, too. So thank you for yeah. sharing that Absolutely. story. Absolutely. Yeah. What about you, Joel? All right, Joel? All right, so mine is Jeroboam. Mm. You're like, that's surprising. Uh, yeah. Now, let me explain <laughs> why. Um, because I actually think with Jeroboam, there are two potentialities. There's two possibilities of what Jeroboam's story could have been. And you remember as we've studied, we found out that Jeroboam, he started off so good. Mm. Um, in fact, I just think about his story as being um, an administrative kind of powerhouse for King Solomon. And an advocate for the people. And an advocate for the people. That's I mean, good. this is the type of person I hope I want to be like, you know, the, who's faithful in my work, but also faithful to the people. Um, and he had so much going for him, so much so that God even made a promise to him, um, which is so interesting because mm. the promise to Jeroboam was a conditional promise, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you follow my ways, we don't know exactly how it would come out, but there was this promise that he would have a portion for himself and for his established. lineage. Established. Established. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I look at him and there's so much about Jeroboam I look back at. You see glimpses of a type of Joseph and a glimpse of a type of Moses who is trying to uh, go on behalf of his people and rescue his people. And there is a pivot point for him. And though he was chosen by God. Mm. Though he was chosen by God. And there, though he started well. Yeah, there was a pivot point. There was a decision wow. that had to be made. And so when I say Jeroboam, I say I relate to Jeroboam because I want to be aware that there are decisions in front of me all the time and there are pivot points in front of us all the time and there are possibilities for us god loves us that he gives us the ability to make decisions and to make choices and i just wonder we can't rewrite the story of scripture but wouldn't it be interesting what if jeroboam decides nah i'm good i don't need to build golden calves because i remember the promise of god Mm -hmm. What if Jeroboam just said, I don't have to worry about the time or the place of worship. I don't have to worry about the fact that the priests are all with uh, Rehoboam. Like, mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about those things because God's got me. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about people saying things about me that aren't true. Yeah. I don't have to worry about whether people will be faithful or whether they will betray me. I don't have to worry if they, the people are for me or against me. Um, I just have to be faithful to God. Yeah. yeah. But I think that pivot point is so relatable. Mm -hmm. So relatable. And I think it's pretty astounding because I think we wrestle with those same things. We're not a king. We're not an ancient <laughs> king. We're not an ancient king of Israel. Right. We're thousands of years removed. Mm -hmm. And yet the human condition is so very much the same. Yeah. There you go. Wow, yeah, that's good. You. Thank you. I know for me, I was going to say Jeroboam too, 
But for the fact that I forget a lot of the promises that God ah. um, gives me and in the waiting or in the season of waiting, I'll tend to like manipulate situations to try to make it match what I feel like he has told yeah. me and it doesn't work out. So that's why I relate to Jeroboam. But once we wrap up week six and we close our trustworthy books and, and we move on and go about our daily lives, what do you hope um, our OBSers walk away with from this study? What's like the one thing that you hope they take with them? Well, I think more confidence to study some yeah. of the Old Testament books and, um, and a better sense of where did the kings come from? Yeah. Why is it important that we study these books of the Bible? Mm -hmm. And what are some of those profound lessons that I can carry with me in my life? And, um, and, and that's one thing I like about the trustworthy book. Yeah. But if you look in the back, so there are these oh, cards are nice. yeah. that mm -hmm. you can perforate out. And you can have some of the quotes that are from each week's study. And then it gives you a prompt. Mm -hmm. to think about some of the life lessons that um, apply to your life. And we can tear these out, stick them in our purse, and really think about them yeah. as we go along. Um, so I think that, but I think ultimately, if you want to know the ultimate Ooh, yes. lesson of what is trustworthy really trying to get at mm -hmm. here, and that is we can trust God. Mm -hmm. We really can. And I know um, I've said these three lines before. I think I originally wrote them in another book of mine, but God is good, mm -hmm. God is good to me, and God is good at being God. Yeah. And I think if we really believe that and we start from that vantage point and we process what we're facing, mm -hmm. um, I think it makes a big difference. I think the mistake a lot of us make is we look at our circumstances and try to determine, is God being faithful to me in this? Yeah. And when we start with our circumstances, we're magnifying those issues mm -hmm. so big, and it's really the wrong place to start because it's a, it's a feeling of um, being unstable, yeah. mm -hmm. really. Yes. But if we start with, okay, mm -hmm. before, I focus on my circumstances. I want to start with, I know God is good. And I know God is good to me. And I know God is good at being God. So from that vantage point, I'm going to look at my circumstances, remembering all the times that God has been faithful to me in the past, knowing that he is being faithful in this. And I'm going to walk in a different level of trust than I ever have before. That's good, everyone. That's good. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you for writing Trustworthy. Joel, yeah. thank you for all the work that you've done also on Trustworthy. Um, I have really enjoyed it. I hope y'all have really enjoyed it. And we have a few days left in the study. And we're going to say the tagline one more time, everyone. You ready? Joel, yeah. I should put you on the spot and make you do the whole thing, but I won't do that. <laughs> all right? So okay. when you know, know the, the truth, truth and live the, the truth, truth, it, it changes, changes everything. everything. Have a good week, everybody.